Hi there, Skitty Vinstani, CEO of OneWire, and welcome to Open Door. Today we're going to go interview my very good friend Alan Breed, who's the CEO of Edgewood Management, one of the most innovative and successful asset management firms on the street today. He's a great guy, you're going to learn a lot. Well, let's go see what he's up to. I'm here today with my very good friend, Alan Breed, who's the CEO of Edgewood Management, which is an asset management firm that has about $7 billion, Alan, seven under billion. management. Yep. Uh, congratulations. That's, that's awesome. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, we have a lot of young viewers that uh, come to OneWire and look at our video series. Um, how did you decide to get in finance? So I uh, actually started back when I was in Choate School, prep school in upstate Connecticut, my first, my first roommate was a guy named Harold Malkin, and he had a stepfather named uh, Lou Horowitz, who was a specialist on the floor of the Stock Exchange. And my junior year in high school, I was looking for a job, and he said Lou was looking for someone to go and uh, pick up sandwiches for the, for the booth on the floor, and I started commuting from Greenwich at about 16 years old um, and fell in love with the business, and I did that for two summer jobs. Got out of Choate, went down to Emory University, and I worked for Lou in one form or another for most of the summers that I was in college. When you went to Wall Street, uh, did you work for First Boston right out of the gate? Is that your first job? No, my first job was with Brown Brothers Harriman. I went through their training program. Okay. And uh, the classic line about Brown Brothers was Alexander Hamilton said, when he left, don't change anything till I get back, and they've done their damnedest to <laughs> live up to that. I love it. Uh, so two years, I did two years in their research training program there, and then I uh, went back to Northwestern Business School. Got you. They had a one-year MBA program that started in June and graduated in June. And did you find business school to be very beneficial? I did. I found it beneficial for different reasons. I, I, uh, I took classes. I was very specific to take classes and things that I didn't feel I knew anything about. So uh, research analytics and, that, and portfolio management, I, I felt I understood because I'd been doing it. But I knew nothing about just-in-time inventory. I knew nothing about technology systems. I knew nothing about marketing. And so I took a lot of concentrated um, classes in there. And then uh, graduated from there and went back to finance. And so then you went to First Boston. And then um, you uh, started Edgewood um, with your partners. I think your father actually started it way back. So, so what happened was, uh, just the history of it is, my, my dad's partner, a guy named Rufus Bullock, uh, died and um, I bought his shares while I was still at First Boston. Mm -hmm. And in 1994, uh, my then boss, Jim Gansudis, announced that we were going to leave a uh, commission-based pay system and go to salary and bonus. And uh, I resigned at that point and started a hedge fund called Wolverine Capital, okay. which was run inside of my father's money management business. Um, and uh, I grew that business from about 50 million of original committed capital to about 600 million when we gave all the money back in uh, the middle of 01. Okay. Beginning of 01, middle of 01, we, we gave it all back. A a a concurrently, I, I took over my dad's money management business as he was winding down, and I hired Kevin and Larry to build that business with me. And during that time, uh, we realized early that going from the traditional uh, investment counseling business was what it used to be called. So mm -hmm. a family would come to you and give you all the money and you would manage that. Uh, n now we are a provider of product to the registered investment advisor channel. And that is a very rapidly going attractive channel where families will go to a, a, an advisor who will then use a best in breed platform. So if you want the best private equity, the best long-only equity, the best hedge funds, and they'll put those together to give the family the desired rate of return at the risk level that they're comfortable with. And if your provider's not doing well, then they replace that. So uh, that, that person was someone who does a better job. And uh, we started seeing that, luckily, well in front of everybody else, and it took us five years to position the firm to be ready to take advantage of that trend. Uh, the industry has changed significantly. What sort of advice would you give somebody that's interested in, in going to Wall Street? So I, I, I've thought about this a lot, obviously, because we hire kids um, and run summer intern programs. I think it depends on what they want to do. But if, if coming to Wall Street to make money is an is important part of it, there are two ways that you're going to make money still on Wall Street. 
the first is you're going to be have to you're going to be able to raise money. The people who can raise money in an environment like this are going to be very rewarded. And if you talk to any of the other people that you've interviewed or at top of their firm, they spend an inordinate amount of time communicating with current clients and new clients. Marketing is an, is a vital source of growing your business, and it has really been moved from the back the back burner to the front burner. You used to be that that portfolio managers who had all the big ideas were the ones that made that ran the firms and nowadays you're finding that marketing people who can develop distribution channels are are really second most important people in the firm and are going to get paid the people who can manage money and take the money that they raise and make money they're going to always get paid too money makers are few and far between if you can generate alpha you will get money everyone else in the middle who processes transactions is going to make less in the future than they make today. Oh, yeah. Whether you're stockbroking, whether you're analyzing, whether you're working in private equity firms, if, if you're just doing the grunt work or the back office stuff, um, you're, you're going to find compensation under pressure. And Alan, when you are um, looking to hire somebody, what is it that makes you sit there and say, you know, I got to hire this person? The number one thing for me is integrity and honesty. I, I, I get I get leery of, of anything in a resume that that, uh, that leads me to believe that I can't trust the person because we're in a money business and we're under tremendous regulatory scrutiny and my first Boston days were quite valuable in that it was always towards the end of the year that I would learn that someone in the fixed income department had buried a ticket in the desk and there was a two hundred million dollar loss and it was coming out of the bonus pool um, if we have any of that happen today with the regulatory scrutiny that we're under we're, we're really out of business so uh, almost more than grades for me, I spend a lot of time interviewing the person and understanding what motivates them and have they shown an ability to have integrity. Mm -hmm. And as Tony Dungy says, integrity is what we do when the lights are out. Do we make the right decision every time even if it hurts us? And uh, that is by far the most important character that I look for and it's why I'm in business with the people that I'm, I'm in business with. I, I trust them implicitly, and, and they would never do anything that's in, in not in the firm's best interest and client's best interest. But that is by far and away the most important thing. Well, uh, Alan, CEO of Edgewood Management, can't thank you enough for having me over. Really appreciate it. What you've done with this firm is outstanding. Uh, your dad would be very proud of you. Thanks, Gil. <laughs>